welcome to Eat, Drink, Write, a podcast about urban fantasy writing. We actually called it a whiteboard, which is what... I like to write on. Yes. I, I don't use whiteboards, but I, I like the concept, especially for a podcast where we're talking about ideas and things that we might be doing. Today, we are going to be talking about what is urban fantasy, since that's going to be the main thrust of this podcast, although we may diverge out into different part different types of fantasy as well but generally urban fantasy because that's what I write and I know that that's what you write I guess I should introduce ourselves my name is Sherry Ellison and I have written fantasy for a long time over 20 years I've got four completed novels none of them published but my latest ones and the ones that I enjoy writing the most are urban fantasy Mm -hmm. and what who are you and what (laughs) are you writing um, I'm Taylor Ellison. I am her daughter, um, her favorite, her favorite daughter. <laughs> um, I have been writing since I was about 18. I'm 26 now, so do, do that math. I'm not going to do that math. I have a few completed no- novels. Uh, I have a tendency to do a lot of rewrites, though, so none of them, none of them are published, but... They're all very good, though. I think that she's done, but like a lot of writers, she doesn't think she's done. I think that's a... a problem a downfall with all writers is we never feel like our work is complete I think so too I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get over it at some point yes okay and submit hopefully so today we will talk about urban fantasy and what it is we hope on every one of our episodes to be eating and drinking uh, something different and unusual today is very simple because it is our first podcast and I am just drinking a sparkling rosé um, Brute Champagne uh, by the Michelle brand, which is wonderful. What are you drinking today? Uh, I am drinking a Cosmopolitan, which I think is, um, I think it's good. I think alcohol and writing just go together. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're supposed to edit sober. Uh, okay. At any rate, so today we're just doing this from our home. Well, my home. She's she's come I don't to, live here. to visit me. <laughs> uh, but we hope to, at some point, do some of these on site at other places and try wonderful food and drinks and, and other locations. Um, but today we are just at our house. So I'll jump right in and talk about what urban fantasy supposedly is. Uh, the Merriam-Webster uh, Dictionary describes it as a genre of imaginative fiction featuring supernatural characters or elements in an urban setting. It calls it a sub-genre of fantasy. That's very generic. Did you come up with a... How did you go about researching for this today? Yeah, so I went... I just went into Google and pretty much typed in what is urban fantasy. And so, of course, like, Wikipedia is going to be the first thing that pops up. So I pretty much took a... Um, a definition from there and it says you know many say urban fantasy has to be primarily set in a city in the real world and it's usually contemporary so it's like usually set in modern times although that's not necessarily always the case and it is it it also said that it's a a subset of fantasy but uh, completely different I think from high fantasy or epic fantasy novels so I agree I've, I've come across when I was doing my research for this a list let me see if I can find it, by the authorlevelup.com. It's all one word, all author level up. And they listed the subgenres of urban, of, of urban fantasy. They've got action adventure fantasy, alternative history fantasy, cozy mystery urban fantasy, dark urban fantasy, detective mm-hmm. urban fantasy, epic urban fantasy, high urban fantasy, historical urban fantasy, literary wow, urban fantasy. Wow, you've got quite a list there. Yeah, it's, it goes on. I had never thought to break urban fantasy down into so many different things. And honestly, I think that urban fantasy probably has a lot of all these things in one story. I don't... I think so too. You know, there's mystery in some, there's um, romance in some, uh, there is going to be science in some because given the fact that it's set in normally a modern type society, there there could be science. Right. Um, uh, po- post-apocalyptic urban fantasy, uh, space urban fantasy, 
<laughs> steampunk urban fantasy, superhero urban fantasy, thriller sur- urban fantasy, and traditional. I feel like space urban fantasy probably lends more towards like sci-fi. sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, which when I was also researching this, I found urban fantasy traits, like traits of the genre itself. And so obviously urban fantasy typically has magic and powers. The main character usually has some type of magic. Uh, and there's usually magic in that world in general, too. But one of the things you have to do when you have that in your writing in this genre is, like, you have to give it rules and you have to, like, stick to those rules. Otherwise, it's kind of like a free-for-all. And it's, That's true. Yeah. The thing that I came across consistently was that urban fantasy has to be in an urban setting. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know that that's actually true. I, I kind of wonder if the term urban fantasy came from urban legends, which aren't necessarily city Uh urban. But, you know, and and like you just said about the main character usually has magic. Well, one of my stories, the main character is totally devoid of magic and gets thrown into the magical world. But there is magic involved, right? There is. And, And I think that there are rules for urban fantasy, just like there are rules for any type of writing but I also think that rules are made to be bent and sometimes broken. Oh, so, I agree completely. Um, I don't think that there's any formula. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell someone, oh, you have to, in order to be an urban fantasy, you have to do this, this, and this. Right. Because it's fluid, I mm-hmm. think. I, mm-hmm. I think that there are many different types of ways to write and many rules that, if well done, can be broken. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Um, what else did you have? I also have, so I'm still, I've still got more, like, urban fantasy traits. Okay. So typically there is like a mishmash of like magical creatures as well. But something I have written down is like it doesn't have to be a kitchen sink, which is basically, you know, you have everything. So you could have vampires and werewolves and fairies and, you know, anything else that you can think of. But it doesn't have to be that way. You could have a world where there are only werewolves. And that's, that's like the only magical thing. That's true. Um, which I thought was pretty interesting uh, thinking about urban fantasy and stuff. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm actually, I'm writing a book right now that really mainly deals with tricksters. Mm-hmm. And I haven't brought in, you know, werewolves or um, like vampires. And I don't really have plans to. And that mm-hmm. one I'm just doing trickster magic. So like illusions and like that kind of thing. And that's where I'm going with that story. So I, I thought that was actually a pretty cool uh, caveat there. And then... Okay. Oh, another thing that I thought was interesting was, like, you know, you have to think about how you set up your world, too. So you have, if you have vampires, and that's, like, technically, you know, quote-unquote, undead, do you also have ghosts? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're world-building, you kind of have to think about that kind of thing, especially in an urban fantasy setting. See, and that's also what a lot of people don't understand, is they think urban fantasy, oh, it's just set, you know, in Atlanta, Georgia, or whatever. Right, right. That that doesn't mean you're not still world-building. You Uh still have to have... Oh, for sure. Especially if the magic is there. And another common trait is that the magic is hidden from the rest of the humans. I have something about okay. that. It's called a masquerade. Which yes. I had never heard yes. of that before. Yes. So when I was doing my research, which is funny because I've been writing, I think when I started writing, I've, I've only ever done urban fantasy mm-hmm. ever. But I had never heard the term masquerade before, which mm-hmm. I thought was, was pretty interesting. Yeah, I came across that too. I had a point with that, but I don't know what it was. So I'm sorry. I, go I got go excited. On. I was... I was <laughs> So go ahead and go on. So for the notes that I have for Masquerade is kind of like, why is this important and how does it change the story? And I think, I think it can change the story. I mean, mean it has to, Mm because if it's a masquerade, then nobody, you know, common muggles, if you will, Mm -hmm. don't know anything about magic. And that's going to change like how your main character reacts to Mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. If magic is the cause of a murder and your main character is supposed to solve it, she can't go to the police or he... He or she can't go to the police because, you know, they might not know about magic. Now, you said he. And that, (laughs) when I I was looking at the definitions, and one of, I came across one that said, urban fantasy always has a strong male lead. See, I found the opposite. And I was like, that is not true. (laughs) Agreed. Yeah, no, I actually do have, like, lists, too, of, you know, female protagonists and male protagonists in urban fantasy. Well, like Harry Dresden. Yep, I have him. There's Atticus O'Sullivan in the Iron Druid Chronicles. Yes, oh, such a good series. You know, I haven't read that one yet. Really? Right? Uh-huh, I need to. Oh, I yeah. really do. It, it's interesting. It's definitely, you know, talking about the male lead. It's a definite male lead 
character, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's just not what I always associated with urban fantasies. But I'm female, so I That's true. do tend to read a lot of the female-oriented ones, like Patricia Briggs. Uh-huh. Mercy Thompson. Mm -hmm. Kate Daniels. Mm -hmm. Which, that's another interesting series, because it's set in Atlanta, Georgia, but it's also set after this incredible magical shift, so it, mm -hmm. everything is completely different than what we would know as Atlanta, Georgia, but it's still classified as an urban fantasy. And in her books, she mentions details that we who live near Atlanta uh -huh. were like, oh, I know where that is. Yep, yep. I know exactly what building she's Specific talking about. Specific buildings, Which yep. I think is really good to get the reader involved in um, a fantasy. And, and, and yeah, she, it's an urban setting, but it's not our world. Uh -huh. But it's our world, but in the post-apocalyptic, magical future. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's it's very interesting. I, I I was very interested in finding out all these different definitions. I know that and list is pretty cool because I had never me either. Because a lot of those are in each. Th you know, you can have mystery and romance all in one. You know, and I don't think it should be defined as a romance urban fantasy. Right. In fact, I I think that you know that's another genre that is out there. There is paranormal romances. Right. And I think that's a totally different thing than urban fantasy. I agree. I agree with I that. I think the the goal of an, a romance is the relationship as it, the arc of the relationship as right. opposed to the arc of, I mean, there's character arcs, obviously, right. but I think urban fantasy is not focused on the on relationship. On a romance, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. Especially if you read something like Mercy Thompson or, mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. It's more story focused mm -hmm. as opposed to and romance like, focused. Mercy got married. So, True. You know, yeah. that's... I mean, there's definitely a romance element yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What else did I have? Oh, another, another interesting topic is magical realism versus urban fantasy. Yes. I had something on that too. So you talk and I'll try to find where I saw that. Sure. Um, so I've heard that magical realism is more like you have a world setting like ours, but magic, it's not a masquerade. Everybody knows about magic. Ah. Um, it's widely used. It's like a common element in that world. It's like ingrained in the world. So it's trying to think if I can think of an example and I can't off the top of my head right now. But Well, that's interesting because, okay, say Kate Daniels books. Mm-hmm. Magic is not a masquerade. Right. But I wouldn't call that... Is that magic realism? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think it's I think urban it's still fantasy. urban fantasy. And I think that's like a, a debate, I think, with these genres. Because a lot of people uh, that I've talked to have, have said, no, magical realism is its own, its own category. Whereas I think that they can be very well blended. I think so too. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was what I found too. I can't find it now, but I'm I'm thinking that that was about what I came across too. I just don't I don't like that definition of urban realism. Right, I just, right. It makes no sense to me. Right. Which, to be fair, I didn't write down the actual definition, so that was me like pulling it from my head. So oh, okay. Um, I ought to probably like go back and look and and see if that is the actual definition, but I'm pretty sure that was the gist of it. Well, one of the things I did because I was curious as to what other writers think urban fantasy is and right. I've come up with a whole bunch of definitions by actual writers if you want me to oh, go yes. over those. Yeah. One of them is Melissa Olson, mm. who you mm -hmm. and I met at Dragon Con. We did. She uh, was pretty cool. 2019. 19. Yes. Yep. She was amazing. Uh, I really like her a lot. But uh, she actually did a, a, a paper about urban fantasy and she talked about how it's evolved since 1984 that she said it is anchored by strong female protagonists, which I agree with. Right. Um, she she goes, other than there there are plenty of male-driven urban fantasies like Harry Dresden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, let's see what else she says. She said, urban fantasy is almost always set in cities, even smaller cities like Ottawa. And she said that's how the term urban fantasy was born. She said... Basically, there's a real world we all live in with mortgages and physics and human biology, and then there's the world of fantasy, of magic. Urban fantasy is about what happens when those two worlds crash into each other. I, I really liked the way she that's defined that. That's a good that. definition. Mm -hmm. I like that, too. She said she loves urban fantasy for two things. First, that it has always been a female-friendly space. Uh -huh. And um, second, the 
sheer number of joyous possibilities encased in that simple little Venn diagram setup. It's so true. Mm -hmm. It's so true. There's so much you can, especially with all of the urban legends mm -hmm. that exist yes. in this world, there is so much you can do with any of it, mm -hmm. like vampires or werewolves for, you know, a more general example. Um, but there are so many uh, urban legends in every culture all over the world. There are, and I love researching. That is one of my favorite things about writing urban fantasy is trying to find the different myths and legends that each culture has and trying to manipulate them into what I want in my world yeah. that I'm writing about. Yeah, no, I agree because it, it just makes it so much fun because the, these are, you know, real stories that have, have come from people that have either been passed down or made up or whatever, but you're able to, to take them and use them and... I think that's just super cool. Now, what would you think, do you consider, like, demon and religion-type fantasy as being urban fantasy? I mean, it could be set in an urban setting, but I don't know if that's got its own category of um, supernatural because it's demons and religion-based. Right. Or... That's an interesting question, which I think there is a genre that's called, you know, that's like supernatural suspense. And maybe it would fit into that. Into that. Although I think so, I subscribe to BookBub. I don't know if you've ever I don't heard know of it. What that is? So it's an email thing, um, and you get an email every day with books that are on sale from um, Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Uh, tell people what how, what is it? So it's called BookBub.com. So it's B O O K B U B dot com. Um, and I think you just type in your, your email. It's been years now that I've, I've been getting okay. these emails. I've never heard of um, it. And I get an email every day with a list of books that are on sale. And you can choose your favorite categories to get books from. You can choose favorite authors and that kind of thing. And it'll list those categories and authors um, in, in each email that you get from How them. How neat. Very cool. So I've gotten some pretty good deals on books from, from them. And um, I think a lot of the urban fantasy ones that I see are listed under supernatural suspense. So it kind of got lumped in with those. Okay. Because um, I was just thinking, you know, there are series out there that have demons. What is that book that I read book number five of? The Witch? Oh, oh, Kim Harrison. Kim Harrison. Yep. The, I have her. I think I have her on here. I do not have her on here. Kim Harrison, Rachel Morgan series. Great, great series. Because there are demons in that one. Yep. And I, I wouldn't really know the whole story because I accidentally picked up book number five and read it first. True. But um, True. it was excellent. <laughs> yeah. Very, very well written series. I, demons, I read the whole thing. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, true, and I, I still would class. I would definitely classify that one as an urban fantasy. Okay, okay. Um, I don't remember the city it was set in. I don't remember off the top of my head the Alex Craft novels that we read. Oh, the uh huh, the Grave Witch. Yes, the Grave, Grave Witch, Witch series. Yes, um, I'm reading one of those right now. I can't remember the author right now. Oh gosh, we'll, I can't we'll have to we'll, we'll have to we'll tell post you in our on, next episode or put yeah. it on our website. Yep. Um, Excellent series. Those are great. But the city that it's set in is um, a city that the author made up. Um, so it was a fold in space yes. that was created with some kind of magical event or something. Mm -hmm. And um, the entire city is completely fictional. But it's still, in my opinion, an urban fantasy. I um, agree. Especially with the way that it's set up. So, uh, you know, I'm writing that book um, with Kada, who it starts mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. Right. And she gets sucked into this other world. And the world has cities and kingdoms and more traditional fantasy on that world. But it started here and she's got definite ties to this world. What category would you call that? Is that an urban fantasy? That's a, that's a really that good a question. Fantasy fantasy. Because I know a little bit about what you're doing with that series. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you said you started in Atlanta and then you go to this, uh, this fictional world that's more fantasy based. Mm -hmm. But I also know that you're planning to bring they're coming back. Her back. Um, so does that make the whole series an urban fantasy series? or? I think it might make it just a fantasy series. Maybe. Honestly, I think it might be fantasy over urban fantasy at that point because you are starting to bring in um, a completely fantastical world. See, and it's so hard because as an unpublished author, how do I get this across to an agent and explain to them, okay, it's kind of urban fantasy, but it's kind of not urban fantasy. So it's, it's interesting. These, it is. Th because it is important in the publishing world for these, these terms to mm -hmm. be defined. You know, when you say supernatural fantasy or romantic fantasy or 
you know, that is important to an agent and a publisher because they have to know where this book is going to fit into the sales world. Right. And so when we do bend the rules, it it's causes a, it's a problems little difficult for, for ourselves. Us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which I don't have an answer for that. There's no way I'm not published either. So there's like no way that we could, um, that I could give you an answer for that other than write another book first. <laughs> <laughs> So get published and then get set and we can break all the rules we want after that. Well, maybe. I'm not sure that's how it works. I think you still have to pitch your works before you can get them published, but I think you would have a foot in the door that way. That's true. That's true. Okay. I interrupted you. I don't remember where you were going with your... You know, me neither. Were but you I can... finished with the traits? Yes. Yeah. Well, because another one was, you know, usually it's the, you know, the time period that it's set in. Yeah. Um, it's usually modern or contemporary because you've got, you know, electricity and, mm-hmm. you know, you've got cars and your modern day bills like uh, Melissa Olson was talking about. And I think that that's not necessarily what it has to be. I think you can kind of play with those rules because what if you had, uh, you know, these supernatural elements like in the 1800s. I agree. See, and you know, this punk, what did he, steampunk is one uh-huh. of the topics. Okay, so to me, steampunk is pre-industrial, well, uh-huh. right on, oh, the, like on the cusp, cusp of uh-huh. the revolution of industrialism. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's interesting. Yeah, I think, I think it's pretty neat because it would be fun to write um, something written in, I mean, go back to the Salem Witch Trials. You mm-hmm. could totally oh, write God. something mm-hmm, yeah. in the 1600s. I'm pretty sure that's when those happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> history is, is not my strong suit. But you could go back in time and write a story there. And it's still set in Salem. It's still set in a city or a town or whatever that exists. And, and I think that that would still be an urban fantasy as long as you include the other elements like magic and powers and it has rules and it has you know different kinds of magical creatures like witches or familiars See, I mean, or whatever the sort of shannara did you ever read those series i didn't read them oh i saw God. the first season of and, the show and they're mm, that's, that's <laughs> right not, mm, right right i love the show yeah but yeah. it's not at all what the first like the first three of the sort of shannara books uh-huh. so good right and they are an an urban setting urban as in there's civilization and they have you know towns and things like that but it's definitely to me a high fantasy i i think so i think just because you have towns i think the the determining factor here is it is it is more modern like our like world that we know i think I would define urban fantasy. You know, and another thing I was coming across in definitions of urban fantasy was that the setting itself is a character. Oh, that's a, yes. So just the fact that Sword of Shannara was set in a town, the town itself didn't make that, it was not a character in and of itself. It was just the setting. I agree. Yeah. But in like Kate Daniels, where the magic shifts from technolo- technology to magic. That Absolutely. That is a, a character all to itself. You know, I think where we heard that was, um, so we go to an Atlanta writing conference every year um, in March. And... Uh, Brought by, um, what's... WDW. Yeah. Uh, Writers, Writers Digest, Digest Workshop. That's it. Yep. Um, and they, they do these conferences, I'm pretty sure all over the country. And they, it's like a one-day workshop that we go to in March here in Atlanta. And I think one of the speakers there mentioned that she used setting as a character. Interesting. Um, which I love. I love mm-hmm. that because it's true. Mm-hmm. You have to use your world in your writing and it has to, you know, you have these rules set for it, hopefully. And, you know, you, you can't just change those. Those It is that character and, yeah. and it affects the story That's as true. much as your main character will, which I think is just super neat. So I think this is a really good place to end. Um, we still have lots more to talk about, so we'll we'll pick up next time, um, t- continuing with our discussion about what is urban fantasy. We thank you guys for listening so much. If you would like to follow us, that would be great. Our social media: we are at Eat Drink Write Podcast and Facebook. Our Instagram is Eat Drink Write Podcast with periods in between each word we have a patreon which is patreon.com slash edw podcast we would appreciate it if you would check that out Um, we look forward to seeing you next time anything else that you want to say no i don't think so thank you guys for listening all right we'll see you next time